Welcome to eAssist Growing Your Dental Business Podcast. Tune in as the experts in dental business share tips and tools to grow your practice. To learn more, visit dentalbilling.com. Please welcome our next guest. Hey, everyone. We are excited today to welcome Elaine Hool to the Growing Your Dental Business podcast. She has over 28 years of experience and her big thing is transforming dental practices, optimizing dental front office operations and safeguarding the practice's financial health. As the CEO and founder of Dentist Advisor Group, she is dedicated to empowering dentists with the tools and the knowledge they need to thrive with a proven track record of streamlining processes, maximizing revenues and establishing clear leadership roles while enabling the dentist to do what they're passionate about. And that is practicing dentistry. You know, take note, she went to hygiene school and I can't wait to hear your story, Elaine. She is also a certified dental assistant and a business consultant with a business degree. Her and her dedicated team are committed to transforming practices through just systems that prevents mismanagement, ensures compliance, and safeguards a dentist's legacy. So we're going to jump into Elaine's journey a little bit and see how she can help your practice. So welcome, Elaine. Thank you for having me here. Oh, of course. I'm so excited you're here. It's fun to get to know you. So let's talk a little bit about your story and how it evolved in creating the Dentist Advisor Group. Yes. So. Out of default, in 1996, I went to dental associate school. And then in 1997, I was working for this dentist. And I, this is before computers, way before. And so everything was written when it came to books. And when you did deposits, it had a deposit slip. And the front office manager was always pretty mean to me. I would always say, you know, please, can I help you put charts up? Can I do something? And she would always tell me, no, no, no. So I literally was always in the back. And so then one day it was pretty neat. I mean, it wasn't neat, neat, but she ended up getting sick. She had a cold and she said, I'll be back tomorrow. Don't touch anything. Just leave everything there. So one day turned to a week. And then two days after she was gone, the third day, I told the dentist, I think I can do this. I really feel like, you know, it looks easy. So of course the dentist was like, look, I want to collect. I want to collect. He was doing crowns. He was doing billing. So I started asking the patients, you know, for their crowns, you know, when they would come in to do C's. And then we discovered that they were paying, but it wasn't on the ledger and also wasn't on the deposit books. I finally said, I think there's something wrong. Either the patients are lying, but I never was expecting that she was embezzling. Again, this was 1997. I was literally... I was so young, I was 22 and I was, and I couldn't accuse of anybody stealing from anyone, especially, you know, a, a lady that was older, way older than me. And, and I respected her, everybody respected her in the office. Well, wow. when we discovered that the checks were being put in, in her name, so the doctor wasn't getting the checks and they were all to her. So this is when the doctor told me at a 22 years old going, you know, so much why don't you run the practice? Wow. And I was like, I can't even run my own life. Do you want me to run the <laughs> practice? I'm so young. Yeah. yeah. But I did it. I did it. And the thing is like, I had so much passion to do it because I had a young, uh, I was a young mom and I knew that I needed to know the business and understand it. I feel like doing that and going to high key school and then it just became overwhelming because now I had to step back and really understand insurances and look into what I could find out and where I was. But it was neat because after three years, I said, I want to be a hygienist. I, I can't, I need to get out of here. So I did look for another job and the other job that the dentist was like, I need a, a back office. But it was funny because I started answering the phones and <laughs> the doctor said, you do such a great job. You, uh, you know, I was like, why don't we just hire another back office and I, I need you in the front? I couldn't say no because he really gave me a good salary. And, by, and back then in 1999, I was ready to buy a home. I was ready to go to the next 
you know, stage of life. And I said, yes. So I committed. I loved him because he was, I said, you know what, find, find places for you to know more. So he was actually paying for my education and paying for like, anytime there was a conference, I would go to them. And it was like, I wanted to learn more and more. But as I was working with him, we ended up getting our first computer and our first software. Now you have to remember 1999, really Facebook wasn't yeah. really in or, you know, Instagram. So when we were trained, we were trained, like we were focused. We were like, okay, this, like what every button means something, but people don't, now today don't realize that every button on a software, there's a reason for it. Engineers put, put buttons and softwares for reasons, yeah. you know? Kind of yeah. like with you, you know, you, you know, with you, you says everybody has a system, right? Right. And then, you know, like what buttons to push, but if I would go there, I wouldn't know. But you'd be, ama you'd be amazed how many people over see the, the buttons that have been gr created by every engineer and every software. Everybody says, do you have your favorite software? It's like everybody, every software has its ups and downs. Yeah. But really understanding how to put the information is what's going to guide you and make your, make your office run the well, same well. line and run better as well. I think that's such a key portion. Some of the things you've talked about, I just think you have to find the right seat for the right person, right? And you obviously did when you started answering calls. Next thing is you have to learn the technology in order to use it. And a lot of times, you know, I remember I did a podcast with a dentrix specialist and she's like, honestly, most of these practices only use, utilize like 30% of what they could utilize with the software, right? So I think you're right on. The engineer created a button or, you know, a system or a process as part of that software to be utilized and to make their life easier. That's what technology is all about, is to make our life easier. And we can also get distracted by it, but I think it's a goal to make it our life easier. So that's a great story. So when did you create Dentist Advisor Group and how did that come about? Well, so after being with this dentist for 10 years, and for me, it was just, it was just him. And I remember that he told me, even back then, he told me, he's like, I'm not a business person. For the first time, someone was humble and and, you know, and really just told me that I need your help. And for yeah. a dentist to tell me this and to believe in me, I didn't realize it back then, but I didn't, I did now I realize it that speaking to every dentist that I ever meet, even before what I, now that I've created it, they keep saying, we went to dental school. We didn't go to business school. I just met yeah. a dentist yeah. like last week that said the same thing. Like, I, she said, I feel like I know all the dental like, I feel like I know the business already. And I asked her two questions and she's like, I never heard of that. So it was good to know that, yes, they don't understand the business. And where I, I started having the passion for it was because I had literally stepped away from the dental field for about, right about 15 years uh, to help my father-in-law. He had some medical issues and I took off for about a year. And then um, I, I had someone, um, here and actually in Austin, Texas, that they were, they created a, a, a big dental practice. It's beautiful. It's downtown. And they, they said, I've heard about you. And I heard that you worked in this multi practice and how you made a difference. I need you to help me with insurance and just with the insurance part, because we don't know what we're doing. And I was like, I, this is before I even created my, you know, who I am today. And I love that I was called and I did what I told them that I, I could do. And they were happy with it. That they even invited me to their open house and they and they said thank you for you know the open rib ribbon like and this was like literally a year and a half later they called me up because they were so happy wow but and after that i like being in a dental practice and like just being there like for two or three weeks and getting out so i started temping the next eight, eight years i started temping and i started seeing the same thing over and over which you know Claims were, were not being processed. Yeah, I saw a lot of accounts just like the AR was pretty bad. I even saw a guy that came in that had two crowns two years ago and, and, and there was not the, the claim was open and never, wow. there was no notes about it. So then I said, 
there's something I need to do about this because of course the dentist is going, oh, don't touch it because the manager will be back. I'm like, you're paying me to help. And all the, most of these managers, all they wanted for me to do was just say hi, answer the phone and don't collect because I'll be back. When I found that they were doing that either, there's two things going on. They don't want to look into what they're having or they have control issues or embezzlement. Yeah. 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 Well, and they probably don't, a lot of times, don't you think they don't really know what they're doing? And it's like, and they are afraid you're going to call them out on not, not really knowing what they're doing. And they don't want the dentist to know that they don't know what they're doing. And so I think that you hit a lot of issues. I'm guessing that that is just a normal thing in a lot of practices, just trying to figure out their revenue cycle management, trying to figure out, you know, how they are doing with all of their you know, over 90, over 30, over 30, over 60, over 90 days with their insurance reimbursements. So what, what kind of system can, do you help practices put in place to help prevent? I know we, t- we talked a little bit about fraud. We talked a little bit about, you know, not knowing what are some systems that you like to put in place about just helping a practice, maybe if there is fraud or embezzlement happening. And there's also neglect, you know, neglect is like, you know, I, I know that embezzlement seven, you know, I, I, I've heard, I heard a guy, I mean, I, he's, he's a good friend of mine, David Harris. We, yeah, we, 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 we talk once a, once a month and, and you know, he's a, he's a fun guy. Um, and I know that he says seven out of 10, if you look him up, a seven out of 10, then it's will be embezzled. But uh, I do feel like in, you know, I think nine out of 10 will also be neglected as well when it comes to accounts and patients. Uh, I feel like a dentist just, first of all, don't really understand how to, you know, how to hire, you know, they, they hire one person and it's like, we can't hire two or three more people because the dentist is not, gonna, not really going to know what job descriptions to give them. Right. And then you, they hire someone that doesn't have a business degree, but under, but understands enough to be there, but I, I couldn't tell the dentist, I need you to hire someone else. Right. And this is the the thing is that I educate dentists. Like once you hit the number, you know, 60,000, you need to add another person and, and why, because you can't run a business with one person. And the, a lot of times that, you know, they, they hit their, their 90 to 120 with one person or two, but they don't know how to grow because they don't know how to scale. Or try or understand like how to give job descriptions to to you know to their to their employees. They they just kind of go, I can't if I can't tell them what to do. How can I hire more people? Right? So then you 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 end up in just not growing. And so first of all, what I do is I like to ask them what kind of insurances they are uh, under. And it is very important that they know. You know, as, as you know, there's a lot of umbrellas happening now. Sure. I think umbrellas happened five years ago, probably even a little longer, but the umbrellas are, even though they're great because they have one fee schedule for a lot of insurances, but they also come with rules and they also have you know, responsibilities under these umbrellas and all that you can't, you can't manage it just with one person or two and um, everything has a responsibility. So I love to see the, the you know, the, uh, the dentist, what they're making and how many hygienists they have. And then I separate the accounts. So I do a system and my system that is, that's really tailored into what they do is a system called A through F, G through Z. So like, let's say if you hire someone that does the A through F accounts. And when I say that, I'm talking about insurances. So if someone comes in with Aetna or someone comes in, you know, with, with Blue Cross, then someone has those accounts. So I do, okay. you have, I, I do give job descriptions. So now the dentist understands exactly what their employees are doing. It's really important that, that, the, that the dentist understands it because then what happens is you can actually have monthly meetings with your employees and you can, and if you see something that there's adjustments or something that's going on, you can be called into the office and say, hey, I saw that Elaine has an adjustment of $500. What's going on? So what we do is that we love to be a part of that. And I even like 
they say there's no neglect, but there's, you know, there's, the, the, everyone's overwhelmed. I, I see a lot of times that managers say, I'm overwhelmed. I, you know, I, I need a system. You know, how do I get leadership? Well, you can't manage people, but you can manage systems. Yeah, and that's sure. what we create. We create tailored systems to their practice. I love it. I love it. So then they, they kind of just know. It helps them with their job descriptions, exactly know what they're supposed to be doing every single day. Do you ever outsource the, the dental billing? Well, that's the thing. It's getting with these umbrellas, which they're, they're great for, for the revenue, but it can become a little dangerous. So this is where I always say ESIS is the best because what happens is ESIS really knows how to just grab everything and take control of the revenue, sir, the revenue side of it. And they do get reports. And I love that we as a team on our side, sometimes the dentist says, well, this is why we want a third party because we don't want to handle everything. Well, we are the, we are the part on the side that if they have a question about something, we have a team that handles it as well. So as we're looking at their accounts, we're also helping them understand what, you know, what questions or what, like if ESIS has a question, we do have teams, our team does that as well. And it's, it's going to, it seems to be working out for sure. That's great. That's great. I just feel like sometimes, like you say, they have so much on their plate. There's, you know, obviously their number one is to try to take care of the patients and to make patients feel comfortable and to answer the phones and do all of the things for the patient. So then a lot of times the insurance side is just the back end where it's just a lot of busy work. And so it's nice if you do outsource some of that. Well, that's, that's great. Do you work with dentists who are considering selling their practice? I do. I'm actually working with someone that just brought a practice and it's really amazing. And that we are, we're almost to the, you know, it, it, everything is in stages. I always tell every dentist that I meet either they're, you know, either they're a, a new practice, an existing practice, or they're transitioning and buying a practice. I said, nothing, anything that comes too easy never works, right? It's always a process. A process of you have to give us anywhere from six to eight months to really get everything as anything, you know, go, go try to run a half marathon. You, you need, you need 12 weeks, you know, you don't, anything ha is a process. So as we're right now going into a transitional one, I love it because he's actually went into some umbrellas. So this other guy was uh, a dentist for 25 years, had no umbrellas that back then you wouldn't talk about it. So what we've done is we broke down all the plan numbers. We broke them all down for him. And we are now uh, using, we're going to be using ESIS probably in about a week or two because they're going to recall and redo all the uh, insurance revocations for them. They don't have oh, time. Nice. Yeah. So this guy actually sold them less. It, so this is unusual. Mostly someone will work for a dentist for about two or three years and leave. But this guy kind of just, they kind of just exchanged keys and he left. And this is where I had to go to this dentist and he's like, you make a lot of sense. I go, these plan numbers don't work for you. Anything that's in, in these plan numbers, when he talks about the groups, the fee schedules, we can have an oops right away. Let's break them down. So we've broke them down and now we're, we're in the process of him, him really getting to understand his umbrellas and know what coverage um, is happening. That's great. And so a process like that takes, did you say eight to 12? What did you I say, eight months? Give us six to eight months. Six yes. to eight months. And especially even as a new, as a new dentist, you have to give us like six to eight months to really get into understanding your business. If anything came in easy, then I wouldn't be doing this today. <laughs> yeah, everybody would be doing it. Yes, yeah, just more sure. Yeah. Well, you kind of learn the more that you tackle these hard things, you learn more and it, it does become easier. It's just kind of like knowledge in general. The more you learn, the easier things get, right? And so it's important to rely on a specialist like you, Elaine, who has kind of been through the ropes with other practices. You kind of know what to look for. You know what to safeguard. You know, you know exactly how to break everything down so that kind of is like baby steps, even though it's a step-by-step -step process, you know, right. you know, the steps. And I think that's really huge 
So we've talked about a lot of things today and how important processes are and how important it is to get all of your revenue cycle management under control. And do you have anything else that you want to talk about before we wrap up today? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people say, I mean, hire someone with a lot of experience. And, and you know, most of your friends says the you know, top is 20 to 25 years. But I, a lot of them are outdated. If I was stuck somewhere for, I mean, I won't call it stuck, but if I worked somewhere for 15 years and then somewhere for 10, my resume looks great, but I never really got to learn what has changed and what's, you know, what's going on, especially not only with insurances, but the way that we, the way that things are done. And um, I uh, was just with a, with a dentist not too long ago that the office manager was retiring and she had been there for 30 years. And mm -hmm they had one more person that only had three years of experience and that was there. And it was, it, to me, it was neat because I could see they were, they were nervous, you know, and the, this dentist had brought the practice from someone else. So this, this, you know, this one office venture was from, from the start to now leaving and super nice, super nice lady. But I, 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 I say, but, cause I'm like, and the, the thing is that as I was looking at their software, I noticed that there was no downgrades. There was no, like the, the umbrellas hadn't been put in. And when I asked her like, Hey, I just have a couple of questions. And she's like, I didn't even know about these things. Like this had never existed. I just wrote everything off. And I, that's not the first time I've heard that. And I've heard it like three times with, um, I, I had another office that I went to that they had just started. She had been there for six months and I said, I noticed that there's no downgrades. She's like, oh, um, what is that? Uh, and she was 55. She had been in the dental field since 90, in 90, uh, I think she's a 94. And a long time ago, downgrades were not, you know, downgrades were, were not a thing. It, they, they have become, um, they've have become stronger and stronger as we go, as the years go by, the downgrades with fillings and crowns. And again, it's all in the software. You know, it, you, there's ways that you can put everything in, but also the, 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 the umbrellas, there's a lot of EPOs. EPOs is exclusive provider organization. And so if you're in an umbrella, you're not going to get paid. I, and that I always tell the, the dentist to go make four crowns on an umbrella that's under, you know, an insurance and then it, it's an EPO and you're not under exclusive provider organization you're not going to be at pain. So there's wow. things that need to be really, you know, a lot of people just go and a lot of dentists just go and get, and get on this time run to go, oh, these insurance fees are amazing. But again, they come with responsibilities. And even though you do have someone with 20 years of experience, 18, reach out because even a little bit of advice that I can give the dentist is, will give me clarity, not only to him, but for, for, um, for their office manager as well. One of the things that I don't like to do is speak to office managers because I always say you're the leader. The yeah. dentist is the leader and they really need to understand who they are and, and what their, you know, what their practice is. So then they can once like, like I, again, I had a, a dentist that we, he, we did our meeting. So I met him and it, this is the guy that brought a practice. And he said, oh, you're going to lead the team? I said, no. I was like, you're going to do all the meeting. I'm just going to be beside you because when you speak, they're going to respect you. I'm just, okay. I'm out coming in and out of the door. And I love that as he was speaking, he was believing and understanding his business. And I'm like, yeah. that's the feeling that you want when you get out of there to say, I know this. And, you know, me and Lily talked about it, but we are under these umbrellas and this is the way it's going to happen. And I saw him take action. And I was like, this is amazing to to see that, but there's there there's a, there's a lot of changes, and and uh, and I I love to grow. You know, it's like every you know every two or three years something else is happening, and also these people. A lot of dentists have an exception that you have to follow secondary insurances, and I you don't have to. I I, I need to I need to actually put it up on my website, and, and hopefully in about. Less than a month, I'm going to put up what 
where there's an insurance that says that they don't cover dual coverage of secondary. So that means if you have, and this is just an example, like if you had like a, a an insurance and, and it's the same insurance name, I don't want to say the name. Like this is not the insurance that has said it, but if you did have like, let's say MetLife and MetLife, like two spouses, they're not going to pay dual. There's insurance that are doing it now. I'm not saying it's MetLife, but there's some that are doing it. And I do have in writing what they're, what they're saying that they're not paying dual in houses. So you can still file it, but don't put it part of the, the patient's AR and, and what's, you know, it's saying like, oh yes, the insurance will pay 50% and this one will pay 50 because that's 80% of that is not, it's, it's not, it's not going to happen. So okay. just little things that things are happening. I get newsletters. I, I'm always, you know, trying to see what's new, what's happening to, yeah. to give that information. But also I feel like the, the, the dentist needs to start taking charge of understanding their whole business and not relying on someone. And if that someone leaves to see, like, to feel like they, it's okay for them to leave, because if someone comes in, they can go ahead and say, look, this person left and this is what they were doing. And this is what needs to be done now because it's been neglected since this person left. And that's my, that's my strategy. And of course, reports, reports, we need to do daily reports every day, monthly. Yeah. Uh, that's really the only way the dentist knows because he's not out. He's not the one doing all of that, but he can look at the reports and see where the money is go coming from and what's being submitted. And I love how you empower the dentist. Like, you know, dentists. They just want to do what they want to do. And that is dentistry, the clinical side. And they need someone like you to come in and walk them through and to get their buy-in on everything so that their team understands that the dentist really needs me to do this. And this is, if I'm going to get paid, I mean, I need to make sure that he's getting paid and we're all on the same page, right? So I think that's fantastic that you walk the dentist through all of that. I think that's so great. And just teaching them the business side a little bit, even though they don't, they probably don't know a lot of times. They don't know what they don't know. I remember last year I was at a dental meeting and I was, I was sitting at the practice booster booth or the e-assist booth. I don't remember which booth I was at. And you know, Dennis comes up and he's like, yeah, we're all about revenue cycle management. And he's like, oh, that's not my thing. That's not my thing, you know? And I remember thinking, it kind of is your thing. You probably should kind of know what's going on. <laughs> but yes. it's just like, I have a team that does that. So like, oh, yeah, but clarity for me, it's clarity. It's clarity. As, as you know, being in a relationship is clarity, communication, yeah, I, I, I even heard that and I heard a, there was a magazine that I read and it said the number one reason that people either break up or get divorced is communication. It's not even money, it's communication. And if um, the dentist doesn't communicate with the front office and the front office doesn't communicate with, with, with the dentist, but not only that, the patient, the, you know, the communications, it goes like in a whole triangle, to be honest, because my 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 thing is if the dentist is saying I, I do have net life when it comes to insurance. If I'm in the chair, you're responsible for the met life ones. How amazing to say, hey, you know, how you know how how you know, how is a like let's say like sorry, let's say if I had met like if I my accounts were met life and you were the patient, how would you like to be in the dental chair and the dentist says How's Elaine treating you? Is everything okay if you have dental insurances? Uh, if you have dental insurance questions, Elaine's going to take care of you. That, that is communication, and that's the doctor understanding that you will get taken care of. And if you don't, you know, let me know. And then, hey, you want to call the de dentist and say, you know what, Elaine hasn't called me back. I've been looking for, I've been looking for, you know, this question with my insurance or or I want to make another appointment and she, she didn't do the pre-estimate that I asked her for. That's when responsibility, accountability, and clarity comes in. Uh, and also resentment is a lot. Uh, as you, I'm pretty sure, as you know, resentment comes pretty high stakes with anybody and everybody. Uh, I have two dogs. I take out the dogs at 6 a.m. I take out the dogs at 7 p.m. My husband does, my husband does the dishes and he does laundry. 
everybody has systems and we have clarity of what we're doing. And if we didn't, then it, you know, relationships everywhere would go wrong. But we even set up systems in our lives day, to, day by day yeah. to have not only clarity, but also the resentment that sets in when you don't have that communication. And that's one of the things that I want to create in the dental, in the, and especially in the dental field, because I was in it for so long that I need everyone to be respected. Everybody go to work, do their job, and then go home. Don't let it be, don't let it just be like somewhere where you, you're just not happy. And and I want to see that back again, for sure. That's great. I love that. So, so everyone, I just, so do you have any special offer as part of our podcast today that you would like to offer Dennis if they want to reach out to you? And what's the best way for them to reach out to you, Elaine? Yeah. So for sure, you know, uh, you can, you can email me at Elaine at dentistadvisorgroup.com. And then I do offer, uh, I am offering a special and it's there if, uh, and I, and I want to say it's 50%, but, uh, off, but what's going on is all tailored. So I do want to say that, um, when I talk, when I speak with you and have your needs, you know, it's, we have to first do the, the layout, the layout of like what, you know, what, what's going on and then, um, go from the fee because I love that um, we are tailored. Um, we we want to make sure that you get your needs and uh, we might have a vision and then our vision becomes your vision and then your vision becomes our vision. And this is where the dental advisor group is is different than just, just, you know, what we do for sure. I love that. So that's 50% off your setup fee is what you're yep. offering 50% off. Yep. Okay, great. So thank you everyone for being here. We are excited that we have had Elaine here today. And if you're looking to transform your dental practice with Elaine's expertise that she has shared today, especially when it comes to the financials of your practice, she's really good at helping, helping dentists with that. Also, just so you know, if you're also looking to outsource your dental billing, please look up eAssist Dental Solutions. They know how to make a difference for you when it comes to all of that backend stuff as well that Elaine was talking about today. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, the Growing Your Dental Business podcast. Leave a review, share this episode with colleagues who you think could benefit from Elaine's advice today. And until next time, we're excited to be here again next time. So thank you again for being here. And thanks, Elaine. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. See ya. The purpose of this podcast is to interview the consultants within our eAssist Consultant Network. This podcast is for informational purposes only. For more details, please visit the homepage of this podcast platform at dentalbilling.com. Thanks for listening.